Thank God this thing works. Whew. Gonna be an expensive morning. Game time, boys! Whoa, get out! out on track. I got this car done right before Laguna Seca Grid Life and we did a test day and then two days back to back at Laguna and the car did great. A couple weeks later, Hoonigan wanted it on this versus that. So I went, I did a test hit and immediately had a clutch failure or something. I don't know, but the car wouldn't ship. And then I went on vacation and kind of forgot about it for a bit. But track season is going to be coming to an end in California. So I want to get this thing back on track. I got a brand new clutch set up from American Powertrain and I want to slam this thing in and try to make it to an event this weekend. I just shot my entire intro on a trash can. <sighs> Some days just don't work out. Literally just got to the shop and uh, filmed this introduction only to realize that I forgot some really critical pieces at home. Come on, let's go. All right, I made you guys a promise that you'd still see some familiar faces around here. Duh. So, Rich decided he'd come down on this rainy day and uh, help me pull the transmission on the E36. All right, so luckily, the trans on this car shouldn't be too hard to pull off. The exhaust comes off real easy. Take the Y pipe off. The only variable is how hard it'll be to get the trans down. But I think if we disconnect it from the bell housing, it should come out pretty easy. <laughs> All right, we got the trans out. It was actually really easy. Me and Rich got this thing down in like, what? 20 minutes, it yeah. seems like. Yeah. Honestly, the hardest thing was that you gotta take all the drive shaft bolts out with a wrench and you can't get a power tool in there. So we're gonna pull the bell housing out, pull the clutch off, and we're gonna go from there. All right, it's been about a month since we worked on the E36 and now I've completely forgot what to do to it but I got a stack of new parts and hopefully we can figure it out and I even got some help today. We got another Long Island boy here. <laughs> Dude, new Mike York. Power <laughs> from Suffolk County, Long Island. Hell yeah. So Mike just moved out to California a little over a year ago now? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, he reached out because he was like, hey, I'm from Long Island, you're from Long Island, we should be friends. And I said, you know what? Come help me work on my car. <laughs> Real friend stuff. Real friend stuff. This is bonding. This is male bonding. <laughs> Something like that. This is male bonding because guys don't know how to just hang out with each other. You got to do something. So that's why we have cars. <laughs> All right. So we got a bunch of new parts here from American Powertrain. And also, I know what you guys are looking at. I hate this hood. It's a piece of crap. We tried gluing it together. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to paint the other side. Give me a break. Okay, so what we have here is a new clutch from American Powertrain. It's a 1200 foot-pounds of torque certified twin disc. So this thing makes about 760 foot-pounds of torque at the crank. So I think this should be more than enough. Matt also said it'll have great pedal feel, but it'll be more than we can throw at it. So that's good. But we have one problem and that's that it has to go in the car. All right, so here's our main problem with getting the transmission back into the car. This thing, it's called a bell housing and it's huge. The transmission is actually pretty small. So what Mike and I are gonna try to do is get the clutch, the flywheel, and the throttle bearing installed, put this in place, and then slip the transmission into here. Which sounds easy, but it has to go through the throttle bearing and two clutch discs and fit in the trans tunnel and we have to lift it over our head. Guys, I'm gonna sneak up on a rare site. This is a male reading what appears to be instructions. We'll get the clutch installed um, fully, so that's fit and finished, and then we're gonna put the bell housing on just with a couple bolts, and then we're gonna measure 
the height of the bell housing off the back of the engine. Yeah. Uh, basically, we're going to measure the mounting surface to the fingers of the clutch, and we get that. And then we have to measure the height from the mounting surface of the transmission to the, uh, the front side of the release bearing. <laughs> So I'm uh, waiting for you to install the clutch in the bell housing. So I went ahead and I got the measurement uh, for our release bearing. And then we'll basically do the same thing opposite, but with the bell housing and the clutch. And then when we subtract those two numbers, that gives us the area that we have to work with uh, for room. Then we'll start adding our shims from there and they give us the uh, parameters that we need, need to stay in between to make sure that this is functioning properly. Yeah, this guy seems like he knows what he's talking about. I feel super confident now. Game time, boys! Whoa, get out! Transmission update. We finally got it in. And boy, let me tell you. It took a long time, many hours. So we managed to get it in without pulling the motor out. It was very straightforward, except for getting the input shaft through the two discs proved to be super difficult. It took us like 20 times taking the trans in and out. Ultimately pulled the bell housing, put the transmission in without the bell housing, then tightened the clutch down. And then we finally got it in. And now once that's done, it's like a 20 minute job to put it back together. So we're gonna continue to jam on it before these guys leave, but I think they're in it for the long haul. Yeah. But now it's you give us pizza. very dark. Yeah, you mean you mean Yeah, feed your friends and they'll stick around. Yeah. You're an idiot. Let me hear it. We're ready. We got everything in. Ready to fire it up. See if this thing works. So we're thinking it works. So yeah. Back neutral. So technically everything should work. So we're just gonna go through the car real quick, make sure we got everything buttoned up. And then we're gonna fire it up, put any gear on the lift, and then maybe we'll go drive it in the parking lot. Thank God this thing works. Whew! Big weight off my shoulders, but the car is good. Uh, goes through the gears. We didn't drive it yet. We got a couple little lines to tighten up and things I want to fix, but uh, for now it works. So next up, let's go hit some track time. You ready to go track? Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Got here a bit later than we thought. Everyone's already set up, and look at these guys. Jesus Christ. Okay, time to unload. Let's get out on track. So what we're gonna do today is shake down the car. The last episode I made on this car when I was at Hoonigan was kind of just like making sure the car could make it through a track day. But I knew there's a lot of small problems with the car and things that we have to develop. So today we're gonna focus on doing a bunch of laps and trying to document everything that needs to be improved on this car so that we could go back and start making progress on it. And there's a lot.
All right, we're gonna go out for the first shakedown run. This is gonna be not driving it too hard. I just wanna kind of make sure the car stays together because we put the clutch and the trans back in, but have not done any testing on the car since. And I'm gonna watch it roll away right now because it doesn't have a parking brake. You know, the side of project cars that no one talks about is that they don't come together and just work great. Uh, the car goes around the track and it feels all right, but the second you start to push this thing to the limit, it feels pretty unsettled. Uh, not just in like traction, but just like kind of confidence. So instead of just rambling off a bunch of things, I'm gonna go through and do it one by one. So first off, I could see a problem that's happening right away, but it's an easy fix. First problem is with the hood. So this is like a super lightweight, fiberglass hood but the biggest problem it's having is that the center is actually acting like a parachute at width at speed so this thing is lifting up and catching all the air under here so it's actually going to create lift so i think we need a new hood but for now calf tape so <laughs> i know this seems absolutely horrible but what we're going to do is just try to prevent air from getting under it and pulling it up Simple fix, you can see the hood not shaking around as much. Amy was watching for the bleachers and said it's no longer pulling up. It's horrible, not a fix. I absolutely hate having like tape on my car. I think it looks horrible. So that's not the solution, but it's gonna work for today. Look who it is. We got something. Guys, if you've been watching track content on Hoonigan since like 2017, you know Alex has this incredible, super fast, E92 M3, it's a car that I should have because I'm not as dedicated to building a race car. And this thing is like turnkey amazing race car that you drove here today. That I drove here today, regrettably. Right. <laughs> People always talk about like, it's a street car, it's a street car. Really, all being a street car is, is your tolerance for complete horseshit. And a license plate. Yeah, you need a license plate and to be able to deal with driving this thing here. <laughs> not, dude, AirPods? Honestly, what put it over the edge was the halo seat. The halo seat? That was it. I was uncomfortable. I was putting my feet behind the brake pedal just to like lounge. Jesus. The car feels really floaty on the front end. It feels like the car wants to roll a lot and has like minimal feedback. Do you feel it the most? Turn in. Turn in is that? Yeah. So Not that it's bad. I mean, if you think it's roll, you could try adding more car. sway. Yeah. But then it goes kind of counterproductive because if you think the car's understeering, it has an abundance of rear grip, but the front's not doing that well. By stiffening the roll center and the, by stiffening the front bar, you're taking away grip from the front. So mm -hmm. I think the other thing is like a lot of people think roll is really bad, but like weight transfer is like your number one tool on the That is back. true. Uh, the thing I noticed most about these dampers right off the bat is how they sort of like soak up bumps really well. Uh, they're not stiff whatsoever, and I think that's really what attributes to putting all the power to the ground in the back. Um, so maybe it's something I just have to drive and get used to, so let's not mess with that right now.
start smoking uh, after a couple of laps, and I think it's the oil catch can filling up. A nice coverage of oil kind of all over everything. I think the catch can, if you look right here, you can see it's like saturated in oil and down there. So I have a drain, but I believe that the valve covers may not be baffled enough. Pouring crankcase vent out. So, so let's drain it. Come here. We'll drain valve right there, and we'll see how much actually comes out right here. Oh my gross! Okay, I need to go get an oil drain pan quick. Crankcase vent will oftentimes be pretty milky like that. Um, and what it is, is basically oil vapors that are coming out of like the valve covers. Um, so that's gonna be a whole other issue that we gotta solve. But that catch can's way too small. It's not baffled enough and we might need to make some more baffling in the, uh, in the valve covers. Getting slightly more comfortable with the car, learning its kind of nuances, I guess you could say. Uh, still, the biggest thing for me is brakes. Uh, there's probably a couple clips we could cut to where getting on the brakes goes into lockup pretty quick. It's kind of scary. It just makes the front end feel like it's on ice. Also, the car tends to understeer a bit. Uh, that could be a ton of factors for that. I'm running staggered tires, not a big splitter, a big wing. Um, and then it could be like alignment and damper settings, but uh, overall I'm getting a little bit more comfortable The car is feeling good. It's super fast in a straight line and It's really bizarre because I've never driven a car like this It has gobs of torque, but doesn't rev high like red lines at 6900 rpm uh, But makes like 500 foot-pounds of torque anywhere you hit it. So Definitely not the type of car I've ever uh, driven before so it's pretty unique for that But uh, it's a lot of fun because I've never had that fast a straight line track car, so it's a good time. I guess that's it. It uh, feels exactly like what happened when I thought the pressure plate failed. So the only thing we haven't changed is a clutch master cylinder up on the brake pedal. Doing the same thing, started grinding, going into gear, shifting like a dog box, like has no synchros, just kind of like falling into gear. Came to a stop, won't go into first gear. It's exactly what happened last time. So a little bit of a bummer because we wasted all that effort changing the clutch, but we could not find anything else that was wrong with it. And we deemed that the pressure plate had that failed, but just a expensive and time consuming mistake. But. Can you shut up? I'm trying to make a YouTube video here, all right, pal? Completely sucks, but the good news is, is the master cylinder is very easy to change and rather inexpensive. So I'm gonna get this thing back to the shop, swap that out, try to put a bunch of street miles on it before coming back out to the track because it's really expensive and a really long day to come out and have the car not work. But I'm glad that we were able to get through a bunch of the other things that I wanted to kind of check through on the car. So it's all good progress, just a little bit of a bummer, but that's kind of the, uh, the game when it comes to a project car and building a race car. So what are you gonna do?
And just like all the other projects, I'm gonna get back to doing work on the E36 as soon as possible. We're gonna go hit Button Willow at the end of the month to get the next stage of development done on this car. So you will see it back on the channel. We're gonna continue to dial this thing in and I'm gonna get better at shooting track content. Uh, it's pretty difficult to shoot this all on your own, but I'll get some people out. We'll do some like on track footage a bit better next time, but this is my first shot. So let me know what you think, uh, what else I could improve, but uh, for now, we're gonna pack up, head home, and then get back into the shop and get this thing going. Thanks everyone for the support. I appreciate you guys watching. I'm out. And honestly, this is why you gotta bring your dog to the track because once you start having a bad day, you know, right? No bad days for you.